So now looking at the supplier manager, uh, really there's a natural cascade of activities here as it relates to the overall frame of reference of contract management. We manage our contacts and we manage the companies we do business with, including our suppliers in CRM. When we mark a company in CRM as a supplier, we then create a contract with that supplier where we define and deposit, store and manage the paperwork associated with the physical contract instrument. But what about the supplier itself? Now we start moving into an area of um, or a depart departmental scope that you might know better as supply chain management. So supplier manager is where you manage the suppliers that are critical to your business and you can do secondary jobs with these suppliers after the fact like managing your due diligence of them where you check them out and checking that they're compliant with the requirements you have in order to have them as a valid supplier to your business. So let's look at the supplier manager element on its own. We can add a new supplier to the system with the, the plus box um, here on the supplier manager application, or we can go straight into the supplier manager to get an overview of our existing suppliers. In order for a supplier to be here, yes, they need to be marked as a supplier in your CRM system. And importantly, there needs to be a contract created um, against which this supplier will be managed. So two prerequisites. Number one, they're a supplier. Number two, you've created a contract for them. On the assumption that those two things are true, you can then add this supplier into your supply chain management function uh, by adding them up here uh, with the add new button or you hit the plus symbol at the bottom right of the supplier manager application. So let's model the activities with adding a new supplier. The purpose here is not just to record them as a supplier to your business. No, you can do that in CRM with that radio checkbox for is supplier. Um, this is about making the supplier available um, with an explicit purpose of putting them into some form of management framework with your business so that that supplier can be reviewed, checked, um, and gives your business the opportunity to track and record interactions with that supplier, both within and without the confines of the underlying contracts, so that you can manage that relationship with them in a more defined and more explicit way. You don't just assume that the supply chain management relationship is good, you have to work to create a good relationship. Pathways for dealing with escalations and problems are valid to your business if you record the interactions that happen during an escalation and the outcome. So this is where all of that gets orchestrated. So in adding a new supplier, yes, they're marked as, as a supplier, uh, number one, and number two, they have an existing contract and you've already added the contract to the contracts manager. So the strategic ranking is numerical. Um, you can use whatever terminology that you like. Most would use um, a range of one through five. The lower the number, the higher the importance this supplier is to your mission. Obviously, a tier ranking, a strategic ranking of one would be if this supplier failed to exist instantly, then so would our business and so on. So you complete the form details here. These are the basic and, and you'll be used to this terminology and, and workflow process now in, in Traveo. Um, when it's got a red background, it's mandatory. But the more information you provide to this parent form, the easier it is to complete the details and actions afterwards when you start adding the detailed work to a supplier. So you complete this form to the best of your ability when you first add a supplier to the system and you can always come back and you can hit the edit, the pencil option um, to change these high level details. Uh, key things here um, is to pick the relevant supplier. Yes, it's, uh, it's obviously important you get the right supplier mapping here. Uh, you pick the contact that is the main contact that manages this relationship on their end with you and who's your main relationship owner on this side. You won't be able to pick a contract from the system unless the contract is already created. So there's the prerequisite being expressed here. 
If you know what you're going to be spending capital wise, so a capital expenditure, you can earmark it here. Operational expenditure for things like maintenance and support would go on this side and any budgets that you have allocated against this spend can be defined here. If you have a non-disclosure agreement in force with this supplier, you tick this box and then you can upload it and it becomes associated with this supplier as a definitive document. Um, and it's managed uniquely so it doesn't get lost in the fray of the rest of the documentation with this supplier. If you have any form of escrow, an escrow could be a deposit, a financial deposit, or an alternative arrangement, for example, with software, you might have to store an example of your software raw, um, uncompiled code with a third party, then you can manage um, the details of who the escrow contact is in order that in, in the event that that escrow was ever uh, to be triggered, um, it's easy for you to find out who it is you need to speak to about it and so on. So you complete this form. I'm not going to complete it now for the purposes of demonstration. I'm going to go and look at an existing supplier that is in the system. So when I click on them, we're now into the details of managing the relationship with that supplier over time. So this is the information that you just saw is looking at in the high level um, entry form to create the existence of a new supplier. And we've really got two fundamental sets of activities that take place now with suppliers as we manage their relationship with us over time. Briefings are snippets. They're like notes of information that you wish the rest of your team to know about this supplier. You might learn something new about a new product launch. You might learn something about one of their key members of staff or their management team. So you can add a briefing at any time. They are serialized by date and they're just notes. Um, that way, when you do your annual supply chain review meeting or your contract renewals with this supplier, all of the notes added by your company, um, supply chain managers or those with access to this application, you'll be able to review these briefings over the course of that term um, so that that information and that context can be explored in that renewal or in that review session. Um, and they're just free text. You add them as you learn them. They may appear unimportant at the time that you originally add them, but you know, over time, it becomes invaluable information to whoever it is that has the task of renegotiating this contract with this supplier later on. Um, so good practice to get into the habit of adding notes and critical path information as it expresses itself to your business because it might be useful when you come to sit down and, and do that renegotiation. So the other critical path activity are review meetings or in this case any strategic interaction, planned interaction, event or meeting with that supplier. So you can use it to record everything that happens routinely with that supplier from a communications perspective. So you've got the date and time, it automatically um, drops back to today's date and the exact time. You can say which contact it was that you had this communication with, and these are contacts at that supplier. What was the action? Did they call you? Were you calling them? Did they email in and so on? And these are from your dictionary. So whatever the action types are that your business uses, it could be a tweet or a Facebook post, whatever, um, you can add them here and what the nature of that interaction was, what the result was, um, and the next best action. So if this requires follow-up, uh, then you would pick your follow-up from your dictionary, and the next action would be um, your, whatever the next course of action is as it relates to this communications event, and you can schedule it so that it adds a task for you or for um, a, a, another member of your team to follow up with. So if you have a communication from the supplier indicating that a product is going end of life and you need to notify your products team, then this is where you would do it. So you'd record the information in that, in that as a review meeting, um, add general information, assign the task with a relevant priority and status, to one of your offices or teams and you can mark who well, it's for yourself or you can pick anyone else in your company that you want to handle this task. 
you can add attachments and you can link it to other activities across the system. So this gives you the ability to track critical path meetings, events and interactions with the supplier over the term of that entire relationship. Um, the difference between briefings and, and strategic meetings is strategic meetings often result in an action, um, in a series of things happening or somebody following up and um, it assigns and allocates a task. Whereas the standard standalone briefings don't. These are just notes about what happens during the course and confine of the relationship. This is uh, records of interactions that occur during the course of that um, relationship that require an action or some form of follow-up. Between both of these, you will end up with a rich history with the supplier, which is available to you when you do your next contract renegotiation or renewal. So the, the sum of these two sets of activities on a routine day-to-day -day basis will be the evidence that you need um, to use to apply pressure or to get a relief of pressure from a supplier based on the history of that, that, um, uh, that supply chain relationship over the term. It's easy to think that you'll remember this information over the course of a year, but you don't. And no company can because people ebb and flow from one role and task or focus to another. Um, so the purpose of this engine is to make sure that all critical information that's necessary for you as a business to renegotiate or to amend or change the relationship or its behaviors are recorded, detailed and followed up where necessary at the time or at some point in the future uh, by a member of your team. Uh, so that's it. That's a quick introduction to supplier management as a function of contracts. Yeah, as I said, the most important thing here is you routinely get into the habit of recording these interactions or intelligence notes and um, activities as they occur because in a year's time when you really need this information, if it's not been recorded, you won't be able to use it as evidence in your contract renegotiation or renewal.